Hey everyone, Michael and Peter here with goodyreader.com and e-readers. E-readers. We live and breathe them, yes. but a lot of people may have not had one before. Yeah. Or you might be just a casual user, maybe you've had a Kindle at one point and you maybe have read a few books on it, but that's yeah. about it. Yeah. What do you look for in an e-reader? That's basically today's talking point. That's yeah. right. So. If you're new to e-readers, what are some of the things that you should be looking for? Well, price yep. of one. You know, if you're new, you don't really want to spend the Kindle Oasis 2 type of money, which yeah. is like, you know... Um, 480 Canadian, at least for us. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, it's Amazon's most expensive e-reader. Do you really need to buy the top of the line, the most advanced, the most expensive, right. when you know, you know, when you've never really had one before and you really don't know if you're going to get a lot of use out of it, you may want to spend less money, get something a little bit more basic, but still has like a good track record in terms of build quality and things like that. So some e-readers to consider uh, the Barnes & Noble Nook Glow Light 3 if you live in the US. It's a pretty good e-reader. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. has um, a new orange screen to be able to mute the, the bright front lit display. Uh, you're buying ebooks from a company that's been in the ebook industry for a long time, although that they get blasted in the news a lot <laughs> uh, for, for consistently losing money both yeah. in their retail and their digital side of things but that hasn't stopped them from investing in their ecosystem and I think for $119 it's hard to go wrong right if you live outside of the US uh, the Kindle Paperwhite it's a good all-arounder yeah the the thing about you see Amazon does this thing where they always have a really really luxurious model like the Kindle Oasis 2 or the Kindle Oasis 1 or at the, the voyage time, or the voyage and then they always have a base model so like a $49 basic Kindle uh, the Kindle Touch when it came out, you know, like the, the basic one, the fourth gen, I think, were still in the realm of paper whites, but it had the control pad and no touchscreen. So they have this both end of the spectrum thing, and it might be confusing, like Mike said, if you've never had an e-reader, and you go to a store and you're like, wow, $489.99, oh, $49.99, they're both Amazon, they both have the same screen size, what is the difference? So that's basically is that, you know, there's so much to consider with it, is that, um, if you live outside the U.S., uh, the Paperwhite, as Mike said, is a really good choice because there's now three generations of it, Paperwhite 1, 2, and 3, including a Japanese-only manga model. So there is a lot to choose from with that, and the prices just basically just keep going down year by year. And Amazon always has Valentine's Day sales and this sale and Cyber Monday and Good Friday and all this other stuff. So yeah, you, you, can, get, you, really can, cheap. you can usually get the Paperwhite for about $99 yeah. as like the everyday type of price. And That's it, like it gets, retail new kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, and I mean, it is a little bit longer in the tooth, but in terms of user reviews, it's the most reviewed, the most star ratings right. uh, out of all the Kindles. So uh, people really like this model because it's like the mid-range model. It has a front light. It's got a touch uh, It has like a good e-paper display. Yeah. Um, it, the page turn speed is like good. It has all the Goodreads features. Uh, it doesn't have audiobook support yet. Uh, that's probably coming somewhere in the future. But yeah, I mean, the Nook Glow Light 3, the, the Kindle Paperwhite, good first time e-readers. You're not breaking the bank. You're spending $100, but ebooks generally now cost anywhere between nine and about seventeen dollars it, right. it all depends on the publish because publishers determine the price of ebooks whereas in the past amazon determined the price of ebooks so a lot of that's pretty well how Amazon and Barnes and Noble and everything got their start in ebooks. They determined the prices. They sort of bought the ebooks at wholesale prices. So ebooks probably from about 2007 to about 2013, they were really cheap. Right. And then uh, suddenly they doubled in price or dramatically increased in price. So you kind of don't want to spend a lot of money on an e-reader because to consume ebooks, it's you're pretty well buying the same. Uh, it costs about the same amount as a digital edition as a print edition now. That is a good point. And uh, that's a really good talking point is that in Canada, uh, we don't have the largest population, but we're we're a fairly large country, and this is the Amazon Kindle Oasis 2, and to our doorstep was 400 and I think 60 or 28 dollars, 400 dollars plus for this. 
you're going to be buying books on this. You can download the samples for free, but like Mike said, you're going to have to buy content. You have to buy, you know, newspapers and magazines and books and novels and full volumes of uh, series and it's going to add up. So not only have you spent $400 on it, you're going to be buying content. That is to say, if you don't care about all the bells and whistles and the gyroscope and the, the cool handle and the, you know, aesthetics of it, you can buy the Kindle Paperweight, save some money and then buy your content. So you have to be very picky and choosy as to what's more important for you. Long term use on something that's really cheap that you can get a lot of use out of or go big with the big boy and spend $400 on it. And a lot of people might be thinking, why do I even need to buy an e-reader when I have an iPhone? Or I have an iPad, or I have an Android tablet that I got from Hip Street and Walmart for $39. Exactly, a yeah. blue phone, a blue prime, phone, prime yeah, exclusive yeah. Or phone. Or something on Alibaba that doesn't even have a logo on it. That's right, so yeah. I mean, why do I need uh, an e-ink reader? Right. Like, any of these that we have on our shelf here uh, when I could just download the Kindle app on my smartphone right. when I could just download Which the Kobo do. app I yeah. mean so here are, here are the advantages and disadvantages uh, an e-reader has the closest display that is mimics a real book this this is basically this is no different than those old black and white calculators you used to use that you spelled funny things with. This is, yeah, I mean, these have... They've gotten paper. more advanced. Yeah, no, but I, I mean, know. But e-readers mimic real paper. They don't yeah. get glare from the sunlight when you take them out. Whereas if you've ever used your smartphone in the sun, you get all the glare. Yeah. Uh, e-readers and e-papers in general have no glare. Uh, my iPhone generally lasts about... 24 hours of, of, of checking Reddit and yeah. like you know looking at dank memes. Uh, well, that's or, a separate or, topic or, right or, there. Battery life. You know, yeah. I yeah. mean, batteries in general. I mean, although that the the iPhone uh, 7 Plus has a big battery. I mean, the screen brightness is maxed. Yeah. I'm listening to music. I'm watching YouTube. Yeah. Uh, I get it about a day. Whereas an e-reader, generally with heavy usage, about three weeks. And standby months. Yeah. These have literally been on for months. Yeah. Just they're not on. They're on standby. But if I were to do the same thing and leave my phone on standby for months, it would be gone in three days on standby. Yeah. So. E-paper and e-ink in general, they don't draw power unless the state of the screen changes. Or so there's some sort of Wi-Fi. If, if or these e-readers are just standing like this, they'll literally last a year they will um, yep they and will. i think this one just died after a year a little battery light came on yeah. but you know they just they last all they last months on end and so uh reading on a phone you get like um so i guess the way the phones work is that the it's illumination yeah. from it is behind the screen into your eyes into your face and so you kind of for people that get eye strain and and things like that it's not the best way to read for the long term but don't forget the phone's always in your pocket it's, it's the easiest exactly you know if you're waiting for a bus to come or on a subway or commuting to work you may not have your e-reader on you but you always have your phone on you That's so you could thing. like read yeah. a few pages of a book have headphones and listen to like an audio book right and um you know, even check out app specific things like Wattpad, short fiction. Uh, there's a lot of uh, serial apps that, you know, major publishers like uh, like Harlequin have put out where you could write, read these bite sized books that, like, you know, will take about 15 minutes to like read and they're written by famous authors. It's just like, it's a short bite sized book, but they only have apps to really do that. They mm. don't really sell these ebooks on the Kindle or on the Nook, uh, but they do it on the phone because they recommend recognize them all everyone has phones in their pocket so if you develop an e-reading app for the phone yeah more, you'll get more eyeballs you on will. it and, and uh, obviously there's way more phones in canada the u.s than there are e-readers yes that's but a fact i think it comes down to it that why would you buy an e-reader because if you're a voracious reader if you're the type of like person that reads more than one book a month an e-reader makes the most sense because uh, not only is it easy to buy e-books directly on a device, yeah. but some e-readers don't actually have a store, in which case you can borrow books from the library, sideload them on your device. You can just download books from like the internet, from like Project Gutenberg, or you can just pirate them. A lot of people do that. I mean, there's no shortage of, of free books that you can download from the internet where if you don't even want to spend money on books, you don't have to right. you can read the latest bestsellers. Of course, we don't endorse that sort of thing, but we recognize that like, you know, 
it, it, it happens it more happen. than you think, but publishers really aren't worried about piracy in general. Um, but that is a topic for like another day, another ebook, table, pi uh, e table. ebook piracy and everything right. like that. But uh, what to look for in an e-reader? Look for uh, a frontlet dis display. That's an absolute must. And yes. what is a frontlet display? Well, with e-readers, they have lights built into the bezel that project lights across the screen. That's right. Whereas a smartphone shines it in your eyes. So you could read in the dark, low light conditions, but you're not getting eye strain because there's no light shining in your eyes. So frontlet display yeah. is a must. So when you're looking at an e-reader, make sure that it does have a frontlet display. I would recommend not spending over $150 for your first e-reader. Don't yeah. spend like do, you know for the kindle line don't get the entry level kindle it's not worth it you're not getting value spend a little extra money and get the paper white right. tremendous value uh but also look for storage if that's a big issue to you a lot of e-readers now do not have sd cards right so you can't enhance the memory past however much is on it most e-readers these days are between four and eight gigabytes of internal storage so that's how much memory you have to download both Books that you've purchased if you have a device like say the Tolino that actually has um, a digital bookstore built into it but if you're sideloading your own content especially PDFs PDFs can get big fast right so with ebooks they're small you could easily load a thousand or two thousand books on an e-reader but if you have a huge ebook collection look for an e-reader with an SD card there isn't many around these days especially the newest models but look for something with more memory if that is a more important to you so to wrap it up don't spend a lot of money yep frontlet display right get a you know a mid-level e-reader don't get the lowest don't get the highest if find out if an e-reader is good for you if you read a lot on your phone you're going to read even more on an e-reader so drop a comment below let us know what you think about any of the points that we've raised today if you think that we've missed a product uh or if you have a favorite product Drop a comment below. For goodreader.com, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.